have any injuries for you. I tell you that everybody practiced yesterday, um, but um, other than that, uh, looks good so far. With that, time's yours. All right, we'll go first to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy, how you doing today? Doing good, Adam. Good. Hey, uh, the, the seven wide receivers, um, do you see a role for all those guys um, as the season rolls along? Or how, how do you plan to split up that playing time? And, and Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, so um, we're, we're kind of going through all that now. Um, there's a chance, though, that we have all seven up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, Chris Oladukin, um, you kept him on the practice squad instead of Shane, or I don't know if it was a choice or not. Was it a choice, number one? And why did you make that move if it was? And what do you like about Chris? Yeah, so look, Chris is a, um, a good football player. He, he doesn't have a lot of experience now, but he's he's gaining it. And you, you saw his athletic ability and his arm and so on through the preseason, did a nice job with that. Um, this, you know, Shane made a decision to go go to Buffalo, and that it's a good st new start for him. And um, I'm sure that's kind of what he was thinking about. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Coach, uh, it looks like you guys are, are moving forward now that you know Chris is is still not with you. Uh, just what's the confidence level that you have with a defensive line room as is, and especially on the inside there, uh, especially given the the trade um, for Farrell. Yeah, so I uh, would tell you that, yeah, you move on. I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> as a coach, when, when the player is not here, then you, you the next guy is up and, and rolling. Um, Chris is a great player, but we've got other good players. Uh, they'll have to step their game up uh, to, uh, to fill the role of uh, defensive tackle, defensive end, and so on. Everybody just has to uh, play their best, and then you, you work through it. But, uh, to think that you're going to fill in uh, for Chris, I mean, that's not uh, that's not what you're doing. You just, you, you know, um, you, you're, the next man comes up and you try to uh, utilize his strengths and let him get in there and play. And we've had success doing that. Um, and so we'll we'll do it again. I know the guys are excited to get in and play. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy, um, have you been given any indication one way or another whether or not Chris will be showing up over the next week? Uh, no, no, uh, there's no no indication. So either way, um, they talked the other day um, and I know Brett filled you in on that. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm just working with the guys we have and and making sure we're, we're set there. And, and then just whenever he might arrive, how, how long do you figure it would might take a player who's missed all of training camp and all of this point to get back in playing shape to where you'd be confident putting him back in the lineup and on the field? Yeah, well, one thing about Chris is he keeps himself in good shape. So um, I would anticipate, I haven't seen him, but I, you know, I'd anticipate that he'd come back in, in relatively good shape. It just he kind of getting himself, working himself into football shape. And as long as he's physically in good shape, you can kind of start working him in and getting him going. And then you play it, kind of play it by ear and eyes after that and see where, see where he's at. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach, I understand and get, you know, that an NFL locker room is a kind of a different work environment than most of us can understand. But Travis, you know, said that with, with Chris, the situation that, he wants him back, but he also said, I don't get it. Is there a sense that you feel that's a similar philosophy that maybe a lot of the players have? And is it something you share too? Yeah, so listen, I uh, everybody makes their own decisions. Uh, I mean, that's the way it is in life. That's the way it is in football. And, uh, you know, you certain guys do it one way, certain guys do it another way. Um, you know, Chris has chosen to go this route. Some other guys have chosen to get their deals done and come in and play. So I listen, I'm not here to to criticize one way or the other. Uh, we've had a lot of success with the guys that we have and 
and we go with it. And so I, I, my standpoint is we got a heck of a Lions team coming in here, in here and with the with the guys we've got, we're going to get get those guys ready to play against the Lions, and I know they'll be fired up to play. And other than that, I take the distractions and throw them out the door, and let's get on with uh, what's real. And that that means uh, the guys that are here and the guys that you know that the Lions they're they're going to show up and with a good football team. Looks like we've got two more. We'll go Nick and then Todd. Go ahead, Nick. And Brad, I'll have a follow-up here on this one. Uh, Andy, first for you, you've been on both sides of the field for Banner Night in New England in 2017 and then at home in 2020. What's that like being on both sidelines, the event, the atmosphere and everything, and trying to kind of focus in on playing football after celebrating a banner? Yeah, that um, again, for us, um, once we got done with the ring ceremony, we've kind of focused in on the job at hand. I mean, there, there's a number of guys that, you know, weren't part of that team. And so I've stressed about, um, you know, that's, I, I mentioned that before and I've stressed our guys, it's, it's a new year. So uh, the ceremony is probably more for the, <clears throat> more for the fans than it is for the team itself. I mean, we'll be out there and do our thing, but, uh, like I said, we've got our hands full with a with a good football team and and the game uh, following up this, this ceremony. So we, we've got to keep our focus on that, and and uh, that's where our energy is going. And and then speaking of the Lions, kind of what I know it's a new team, new year, but what's kind of stood out about you, either scheme wise or the team collectively in general so far? Yeah, well, we look forward to this challenge. I mean, this is a this is a big big challenge for us. They, they they finished on absolutely on fire. They play aggressive football. Dan's done a great job up there with his guys, um, you know. And, and so I just uh, I know, you know, I know we've got to really have a great week of preparation uh, going forward. And between Aaron and Ben, they've got good coordinators. So both their schemes are good on both sides of the ball. And, um, and they, like I said, they've got good talent. So. Um, our guys will come in here and focus on uh, that. They'll study the the players and they'll study the schemes. And <clears throat> by the time we get to you know Thursday, we'll we'll have all the different situations uh, down. So it's a normal normal week. Today for me is a Monday, um, you know, in, in uh, the football world. So um, that's how we're doing it as a staff. The players are off on Mondays during the season if it's a Sunday game. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll start the regular week tomorrow with uh, the players in here lifting and doing their, their stuff there. And then, then we'll follow, follow up with our Wednesday, Thursday practices from there. We'll go last to Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Todd. Brad, I'll have a follow-up as well. Coach, uh, on, the, on the Lions, last year looked like they kind of struggled defensively. As you've looked at them through the preseason, what improvements does it look like they've made and what sort of a challenge defensively specifically will it be for you guys? Yeah, they, they kind of answered that midway through the season. They, I, I thought they were really playing good football as it went down the stretch there um, defensively. <clears throat> and I know they've made, made some upgrades, uh, you know, to their – to that defense and um I, I've, some of the players we know uh one of their safeties was um in the super bowl against us so anyway there, there are players there that i'm familiar with uh that are really good football players so we we've got to you know we've got to be sharp on from an offensive standpoint last thing for me on on chris is there a point where you you may want to get involved or Brett may want to get you involved or are you totally out of that side of that now that you don't have personnel stuff like you were doing in Philly? Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that, whether I've been involved or not involved. I, I just, uh, um, you know, the, this is, it's ongoing. I think Brett explained it the best. So, I mean, um, but it's a, it's an ongoing thing. We just, you know, right now, Obviously, my focus is on, <clears throat> excuse me, on what we've got here. And I mean, that's, you guys have been around me long enough to know how I roll with that. And uh, that's what, that's, 
that's where I'm going. I let Brett do his job and, and the guys, you know, his, his guys over there, I have full trust in them and, and, uh, and the way they're going about it. So. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Thank you.